the management of relapse and refractory myeloma patients uh, today is uh, quite challenging, especially because uh, the first line of therapy is going to influence the subsequent lines of therapy. And the first line of therapy is rapidly evolving. And uh, every year or every six months, uh, we face uh, with a new standard of care in the first line of therapy. I personally consider that uh, today in 2020, one appropriate question at first relapse is if the patient is CD38 monoclonal antibody naive, yes or not. If the patient has not been previously treated with anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies, the combinations that are coming as a new standard of course will be daratumumab in combination with the carfilzomib and dexamethasone, as well as daratumumab, isatuximab in combination with carfilzomib and dexamethasone, and daratumumab in combination with pomalidomide and dexamethasone. It's true that there is also a space for daratumumab in combination with bortezomib and dexamethasone, but I think that the first one combinations will be better for these patients. If the patient has been previously treated with anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies, maybe we have to go to combinations free of anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies. And pomalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone is one possibility, as well as bortezomib and dexamethasone plus selinexor, that is a new combination not approved yet, but I am talking about the potential new standard of CURS. And also, I have to mention the role of venetoclax in combination with bortezomib and dexamethasone, maybe specifically for patients with 1114 translocation. At second relapse or subsequent relapses, I think that one appropriate question is if the patient has been previously treated with pomalidomide, yes or not. If the patient is pomalidomide naive, here in Europe, there is possible to utilize two POMDEX-based combinations, pomalidomide examedasone plus ilotuzumab, pomalidomide examedasone plus isatuximab, because randomized studies showed that these three drug-based combination were superior to pomalidomide and examedasone alone. There is uh, uh, also another possibility, and is uh, to go to novel agents with uh, different mechanism of actions. And uh, I am going to talk about selinexor, approved in the US for what we call pentarefractory myeloma patients. Although I personally consider that selinexor is going to be a platform to which uh, we can potentially add pomalidomide or daratumumab, and uh, the same is for melflufen a new alkylator, a new drug with alkylator's properties that has shown to be effective in these three drug class refractory patients, although in the future it would be possible to combine either with either bortezomib or daratumumab. BCMA targeted therapy would be the other specific approach to, to go in the relapse and refractory situation. And it is possible to target BCMA through conjugated monoclonal antibodies. And Bell and Maf Mafodotin has just been approved by FDA in, in US. And in Europe, the CHMP gave its positive opinion to EMA. So we will have a very soon Bell and Maf Mafodotin for these three drug class refractory myeloma patients. But it is also possible to target the BCMA through bi-specific monoclonal antibodies or CAR T. These two latest approaches are considered part of the third therapy, promising approach of therapy for the relapse and non-refractory patients that will definitely move to earlier lines of therapy and even to the affront setting. And maybe in the future we can incorporate this third therapy into the algorithm of, for the management of a newly diagnosed myeloma patient and uh, potentially offer the cure to some uh, patients with multiple myeloma.